You know, at the time it was, um, you know, it's quite difficult to, to deal with, you know, playing your last game, but um, you almost know it's coming, but the, the difference is, is, is preparing for that moment. Um, it was um, my last professional game um, was at uh, Hamilton Academicals, which I was only there for half a season. My friend had brought me up, um, who was assistant manager there at the time, Graham Jones, who's now at Everton. Um, and it was it was a, a you know a difficult moment where you know I knew it was coming, but again, like a lot of ex-professionals, are you prepared for it? And I certainly wasn't at that time. Um, whether that was off the pitch or on the pitch, you know, I knew my body had had its time, um, and I knew that probably <laughs> a little bit earlier. But uh, in terms of actually, um, you know, off the pitch financially and what I was going to do after football. No, I wasn't prepared, no. My partner at the time said, look, you know, you need to do anything. Do any and I couldn't get my head around doing anything. She said, look, just go and be a postman or be a, you know, whatever, built a bin man or whatever. And I couldn't get my head around that. That was something I, I found really difficult to, to deal with. Um, I'd apply for jobs and I didn't really want them. I was hoping I didn't get them, you know, whether it was a postman or whatever. And, just to say to her, look, you know, I haven't got it, you know, there's nothing out there. But, um, you know, it, came to, it comes to a time where you've got to support your family, you've got to look after and do what's right for them. It's not all about me, you know. And, well, I mean, like I said, I was on a, a building site, it was on, it can be, you know, spontaneous work with, with my friend and whatever, whenever he had work, he couldn't guarantee it all the time. He just said, look, I, I'll always try and help you, um, you know, which I'm ultimately great, grateful for now. And, um, but I did that, you know, for a period of on and off for maybe a year or two. Um, but I also, you know, I, I had to sign on or I went to sign on, you know, to try and see if I could get maybe coaching jobs within schools and, and things like that. And, um, you know, community work within, I thought, well, being an ex-pro, surely there'll be something out there that, you know, there's someone that would offer you something. Um, there wasn't a great deal. Um, I thought I'd be able to get a little bit of money through that, you know, from from the uh, job seekers sort of thing, and um, I wasn't entitled to it because I had a personal pension, um, so which wasn't massive anyway. But so really, I was just getting my stamp, you know, so sort of in preparation for if I did get a full time job, then at least my my stamp was paid. So um, all them things, but I mean after after then. Um, I, you know that that was all I did really until I got a, a call from a good friend of mine whose um, whose friend was a football agent um, who was based in Leeds. Um, he started off as a, a financial advisor, um, which escalated into being a football agent. Um, and I brought my friend on board to try and expand the business um, from from a nucleus of having and looking after. Uh, seven or eight players to trying to expand it to compete with the big agencies out there um, and my, my friend's idea to, to to the agent was look Kevin's out of work he knows a lot of people have been in the game a long time is there any work for him can we bring him on board um, hoping you know things would you know kick on and, 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 and expand the business and and that's where we're at now really um, it's been over four years now um, and the business has, you know, kicked on, you know, and we've really, you know, took it to another level from what where it was, to be quite honest. And I'm not saying it's down to me at all, but it's been down to a good, a good group working together, pushing hard to uh, achieve that. Yeah, there's a, there's a bit in there somewhere. Yeah, I'm just getting tight now. I know. I know. We used to have them as baggy as possible, which yeah. is brilliant. That was for a reason, I think. Yeah, because <laughs> we all had a bit of that. That's, that's, my, that's my favourite one, to be fair. I love that. I one. one year that. I'll be totally honest that at Leeds, you know, I, I probably, you know, I was at a level where I was in the first team, in and around the first team squad. Now, I wasn't by no means um, made it or anything like that, but I probably thought I had, you know, at that age. You know, I was 21, I think, when I left. Um, I should have stayed longer. I mean, every, you could probably speak to anyone in life or for, certainly in football, you have a lot of regrets. And one of them for me is leaving Leeds United at the age I did. And that was me being 
thinking I was better than what I was. Um, but you know, that's probably any player. Any player could probably say they've got this. We get that. You know, we should have took a left turn there instead of a right. Or you know, that that's that's life. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of the, the club itself, it's. You know, it's a fantastic club. You know, I'd always advise players to, to play for Leeds, you know, and stay there as long as they can. I've always, the advice I've been given is stay as long as you can at, at the top, um, whether you're in the youth team, whether you're in the, the reserves or first team. There's a lot of ups and downs in football. It's how you, certainly now, I, I, you know, I say to the boys and, and the lads who I look after, finding that happy medium when you're playing well, when you're playing bad. Stay on that level, that medium sort of like line in terms of your character, in terms of your performance, and you won't go far wrong because after you finish and after you, you know you retire, the problem is you get in football you get a lot of highs and lows, but if you can deal with it while you're playing, after you, your character deal, will deal with um, dealing with the highs and lows in life after football. How do you fill a big hole at the back? Big Jack Charlton was on his way and Gordon McQueen was hardly bedded in. Don Revy needed a man to keep out the goals and yet maintain a tight back four. Roy Ellen was that man who went from peddling fertiliser to a career in the pub trade. Yet he's reinvented himself and at 71 is still working and pumping iron. Um, my, my daughter caught wind of it. Um, she, she, was, she was training at Fitness Connection, Ravensthorpe, which is near Dewsbury, and uh, her and her boy, boyfriend then, or a partner then, said, look, why don't you come and work for us and help us in the gym at Ravensthorpe? So I did that. I did that, stayed with them there, and then five years later, they decided that they wanted to look at another venue and ideally um, just down the road from Ravensthorpe you've got Murfield, a very very nice more upmarket place and a guy there who was in big, big financial trouble, it was a gym but not a very good one, not in good nick so my daughter and son-in-law took over that one and they had this bit of a brainstorm and thought wow what a place right in between Huddersfield Town and Leeds United why not call it Roy Ellum's Premier Health Club and it's been like that now for the last five years the very very first interview that I got was down in Lincoln with a company called Sinclair Horticulture and Leisure and I had an interview there and I came home and they rang me when I got home and asked me if I still wanted the job and I said yes please. And so I went down there for a week's training, took on the job and became a full-time employee of theirs. And I had to cover every garden centre in Yorkshire and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I did that for two years and my wife was fed up then. She was fed up because she, she said her and the kids didn't see me because I as a sales manager, I had to attend Southport Flower Show, uh, Harrogate Flower Show, Chelsea Flower Show. Um, and then my wife, as I say, she said, I, I don't like it anymore. Let's do something else. And I said, well, what, what are we going to do? So the only thing I can think of is what I want to do, is I've mentioned it before, is let's have a pub. At that particular time, I was still playing football every Sunday for Leeds United ex-players with Peter Romer, Peter Lorimer, Eddie Gray, John Charles played, etc. All the ex-players. And I said to John Charles, because John Charles had a pub, don't forget. And so did Harold Williams, the Welsh left winger for Leeds United at the same time as John played. And between them, them those two got me an interview with Whitbreads, because they both had Whitbread pubs. And we went and got the, got the interview and we plastered with flying colours and within weeks we were in a pub. Don Revy himself then came at some time and, and joined in a little bit and he wanted to see what we were doing, what exercise we were doing and then he, he, he'd um, give us 
a five-a-side match to finish with, which was rather exciting in as much as Norman Hunter primed me and said to me one day, Roy, don't pick Scottish players. We hate them. He said, just pick the English lads. We'll have England versus Scotland. So, the very first time it were done to myself and Trevor Cherry, right, we'll have the two new boys. Roy, your captain. Trevor, your captain. Roy, toss the coin. Toss the coin. I won. Who are you picking first, Roy? Norman Hunter. So off we went. And I made sure I got five more English, I got five Englishmen with me. And, uh, oh. When you played in those five asides but then in them days, like World, World War World War Three. Tropical world in Leeds. And it doubles up as a care home these days for goldfish. And Goldie swims around all day, feeding off free-range worms. Not a bad life after the hectic days in a bowl in the United Boardroom. Now you know. <laughs>